you'll never find another love like mine one who loves you the way I do you'll never find as long as you live 2020 one who loves you the way i do oh i love the love the love the love you baby i love you girl you in my world is true new joke t smith you never find another love like mine Happy, happy Labor Day to all y'all out there. Smelling like barbecue out here. People was out in the park. I ain't even think people come out here this late to get out here and walk. But as you can see, it is quite crowded out here. Nice and cool. T. Smith. It's nice and cool out here. Feels good. Man over here playing soccer, practicing by himself with the wall. Got the beautiful young ladies out here walking. EJ. EJ Miller in the building. Slaughter just stepped in. You already know. Salute. Yeah, yeah, come on in, come on in, y'all. Let the notifications go out. Y'all know the notifications take long to go out. Double O, what up? Man over here on the grill, grilling. I should have came out here and grilled today. Who out there got a barbecue going on right now? Somebody on the grill where you at? Let me know. Man got the grill going right here. I wonder how much you charge for one rib. How much is for one rib? <laughs> ah, that barbecue smell good, man. I don't think I got on the grill. Yeah, I, I don't think I got on the grill this summer yet. I don't think I did. Yeah, my people's supposed to go out on the grill, but it rained us out. I guess we're going to have to do it before the summer ends. Or oh, this is the last week of the summer, isn't it? We at the beach today. 
Portal grills is a must. Portable grills. John Paul, what up? It's too damn hot to grill out here in Charlotte. It shouldn't be that hot in Charlotte. I think it's like 90 here. Come on in, come on in. See, this is why I play my music in the beginning. Because it takes forever for these notifications to go out. And I came out here late. So it may get dark on me. But I had to come out here to get my workout on. I've been working on the project that I'm getting ready to release. And I'm telling you, it's taking a lot out of me. Because I got to do all kind of stuff that just some of y'all wouldn't understand, some of y'all would understand. But uh, I'm about to drop a project on y'all, along with my other project that's going to be coming out soon. So hard work, y'all. Hard work, hard work, hard work, hard work, hard work. Hard work. Right. So, uh, My bad, y'all. Everybody want to be calling right now. I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. There's people calling my phone. Am I back? Can y'all see me now? Double O? All right, we back. All right, good. All right. So, tonight. Tonight's the night, the night. Whoa. Yeah, we back, we back. So, tonight, I had to come on because, as y'all can see, for y'all that's lawyer watchers, you know, you newcomers, y'all might not be aware of what I'm about to talk about. That's why you gotta subscribe to the channel and be loyal to choke no joke for you to understand what's going on. Cause I don't be wanting to recap everything. This is for the lawyer ones. So this is for the, the lawyer viewers today. Cause I'm not gonna really go that far back into this this is for those who rock with me and been rocking with me god that goddamn barbecue smell good Whew. that smell of the charcoal cooking that meat but um yeah like i said i'm not i'm not going uh reiterate everything so today i posted uh a video that i was telling y'all that you know the lawyer ones you remember i was telling y'all a little while ago that you know i could prove to y'all that i saw jay-z and Aaliyah together as a couple because i interviewed them uh at little kim's album release party at the punk building And um, oh, let me get it set in before it get too dark and the dead be walking out on me. Um, yeah, so what you call it? I was telling y'all 
a while ago that that I had to interview Aaliyah a while ago in the year 2000 when she was dating Jay-Z. Now, a lot of people didn't believe me. And those who are, you know, loyal watches that know I don't be capping and I don't be lying and it's truth be told all day, every day, even on your birthday on this channel. I hope somebody counted that. Because <laughs> I got lost in 70. It was between 70 and 80. That's all right, though. I know I counted 70 at least. I lost count after 70, because I was trying to go to 100. Double O, you counted 80? Yeah, me too. Cool, thanks. Yo, do you do warm after slow baths when you get it in? Dry off warm. And some warm avocado oil for your joints stretch gently. Yeah, I do that. After I work out, I'll take an Epsom salt bath. Then I stand up and take a shower. Thank you, Nandy. I'm trying to get on the cover of Men's Fitness. I'm glad I could be an inspiration to somebody. So now getting back to Jay-Z and Aaliyah, right? Like I said, if you're a lawyer, watch your you already know what I'm talking about, so I'm not going back to the beginning. So I told y'all that I knew for a fact that Jay-Z was with Aaliyah because I seen them together. And I told y'all about how I went over to Jay with Aaliyah. They came in the party, booed up hand to hand. And I asked Jay, like, yo, can we do an interview with y'all? He was like, yeah, but not together. Like, do it separately. And I told y'all about this. But many people didn't believe me that I was telling the truth about that. So I sold y'all the pictures from that day. And if you go into my community channel, my community page right now, I, po I posted the picture of the collage that I had created back then. 
when I was working at BET, when everybody was trying to say that the breakup of Rockefeller ain't had nothing to do with Aaliyah. <clears throat> so I had created, created, got, got tired of arguing about it. So I created this collage and show all the pictures with Jay and Aaliyah, as well as the day that Jay told me personally, yo, just interview us separately. They ain't, you know, cause they ain't want people to know they was a couple. So I'll put those, I place, I played the video, just a little piece of the interview today with my host, Mr. Excitement. Shout out to Mr. Excitement. Like a lot of y'all don't even realize that that was us. Street Funk TV on public access in, in New York City that y'all all used to watch on B-Cat or Bronx Net. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that was me. That was me, Mr. Excitement, Mellow Mike Hype, uh, Dean Ramondo, JB. It's a, a whole list of people that was involved, you know what I'm saying, in that. But after Ralph McDaniels, it's us. You know what I'm saying? So, and Ralph McDaniels know it. He'll tell y'all, Choke No Joke was everywhere. Some interview, I mean, some places Ralph was shooting, I was shooting. You know? So, I would call it. I've been in this and I've been doing this. And I see now I'm going to have to go through my street funk days to show y'all who the hell Choke No Joke is. Because y'all, y'all, like, we've been interviewing Aaliyah and Dr. Dre and, and Timberland and Missy and all, like, come on, Puff, Baby, Lil Wayne, back in the days when Wayne was only 14. It's like, these dudes is trying to front on me. And I know I just be talking about Choke No Joke career, but even before I did that, I had my live music channel and street phone that I was producing, directing, and shooting for. So that Aaliyah interview that y'all see on my page with uh, Saul from Saul and Pepper, that was at Lil' Kim's album release party in the Puck building. That's 23 years ago I did that. 23 years ago, still independent. How, was you, how old was you 23 years ago? When I was interviewing Aaliyah and, 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 and Saul and everybody y'all see in that video, if you just look at the clips, Russell Simmons there, Tyson Beckford is there. You know, but don't worry, I'm gonna bring y'all all those interviews. You know what I'm saying? I'm pulling them out now and I'm gonna be dropping them. You know, because it's like, y'all ain't gotta give me my flowers. I'll pick them myself. And it just make y'all out there that don't want to give me my props like the BETs because they not hugging Jay-Z, you know, and all those people. I'm going to show y'all they hate it. I'm going to show y'all to make y'all be like, yo, damn, how y'all ain't got choke on none of this 50 of hip hop stuff, all this stuff he did? How many people you know it could go and pull a Aaliyah interview like that? And that ain't the only Aaliyah interview. We interviewed her at the tunnel when she performed at the tunnel. That's just one of the many times and one of the many parties that we was together. Same thing with Jay-Z. Plenty of Jay-Z before he was, he blew up. So now that I see that Netflix and all of them act like they don't understand the value and the content that I got 30 years of content, why they call me the content king, I'm going to show y'all independently. Because I just did a new distribution deal. And I ain't got to go through nobody. I ain't got to get approved through, through nobody. All I got to do is just give up a percentage. And I maintain my ownership of all my stuff. Oh, I need some push-ups. I maintain the ownership of all my stuff. And I get the bigger percentage. So I ain't 
I'm not tripping because in a minute, y'all going to see all my projects everywhere. And I, I thank God that we don't have to go in these buildings no more and do deals. Thank you to VOD and different platforms. I might have been 50, which will bring me to 130 and two sets. Steady grinding, what up? Push-ups take a lot out of them. But they got my chest right. It's making that, that stomach turn into a six-pack. So, getting back to my live music channel show. So, my live music channel show was at the show that, that I created and when I broke off from Street Phone that I did independently, but, you know, I still brought the same crew with me because I got a deal for me by myself. But, you know, I brought the same team with us and it was the first time, you know, because doing the street phone trucks, I never got a check for that. You know what I'm saying? It was all me doing a bunch of hard work and shit to build the name, to build our company and build it up because we became partners after a while. And then I broke out and did the solo thing, but I still had Dean and, uh, and uh, excitement with me. And we continued going. And then after that is when I went to Rockefeller. But you know, these are years apart, right? So. And my highest rating on uh, that live music channel was the 2.6 on the Nielsen ratings. And that was my Snoop Dogg and Dr. Dre show at the tunnel, which is mean 2 million viewers, six, 2 million, 600,000 viewers on a TV show. Me independently doing that. And I wrote, produced, directed that show, okay? Even when we had the Street Funk show, we got the B-Cat Award. So many years in the in a the row, they retired us. That's how, that's how much we was killing them. Killing Ralph 2, video music box. Yeah, we got retired from the award show because we got, kept winning too much. But they ain't gonna tell y'all that. They not gonna tell y'all that. So like I said, they ain't gotta give me my flowers. I'll pick them. They ain't got to give me mines, I'll take them. So, the clip that y'all seeing with Aaliyah, Salt, is just one of many shows that I did with my live music channel show. Mr. Excitement as my host, Chara Moore was my host. Um, yeah, Excitement and Chara. So, 
like I said, I'm gonna bring y'all more of those. But for all those that was in my comments about where's the receipts? I don't see no receipts. That's because you're not a frequent watcher of Choke No Joke. The receipt was me showing Aaliyah that I got an interview with Aaliyah. That was the receipt. You seen my host excitement talking to her. That was the receipt. That's all you needed to see. All my people that follow me on the regular, that's all they needed to see. It was, oh yeah, Choke did interview Aaliyah. And then they're going to go and they're going to pull up the picture with Jay-Z and Aaliyah in 2000 at the Puck Building. And they're going to see Aaliyah's outfit. And then they're going to see the pictures and see Aaliyah and Jay-Z booed up, looking all nervous and shit, because they didn't want nobody to see them together. And I'm standing there. When you seeing Jay and Aaliyah and them pictures looking around, that's me standing right there talking to Jay, asking him to do the interview. And he like, not together, you know, do it separately. But Johnny Nunez is snapping pictures while Jay and Aaliyah looking around and shit. Like, cause Jay like, yo, don't, don't do us together. Do it separately. So they, they looking around and see how much people is watching them together. And while they doing that, Johnny snapping pictures. So back then, Johnny used to give his pictures to Getty, Getty Images. And that's how I was able to retrieve them way back then. Cause even they, you know, Johnny got pictures of me on Getty Images and everybody else that who was around around that time. But it was it was perfect for me because I was able to get grab those receipts and show y'all that when choke talk, there's no cap. I had to get some dips in real quick. Yeah, I like working on the upper body. So, all right, moving on from the uh, the Jay-Z Aaliyah stuff. Once again, if you're a regular to my channel, you wouldn't be sounding uh, lost in the comments. So my, where's the receipt? I don't see no receipt. This ain't no receipt. That's because you're not a regular here. You're coming for some tea. Well, you need to come over here for the full course meal. You're not going to come here for the full course meal. And you want some tea. We don't do tea over here. Tea gives us headaches. We drink coffee. <laughs> That's a Bugs Bunny joke for those who it flew over your head. Like, how many lumps do you want? One or two? No, 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 no. So I don't drink tea. It gives me a headache. I want coffee. So old Bugs Bunny joke. Some of y'all too old, too young to know about it. Now, let's move on to the next topic. Queens get the money, long time, no cash. I'm caught up in the hustle where the guns go blast. Shout out to everybody from Queens in the building.
Now, I know many of y'all be talking about this Bimmy situation. Yeah, Bimmy Anton. Did uh, Queen Slip do an episode yet of Bimmy telling? Cause he like he like to bring people on his show, some of our niggas telling. <laughs> now, I don't I don't care. Check, check, check. Somebody just called. Can y'all hear me? Somebody let me know if y'all can hear me because I just got another phone call. Am I good? Microphone check. Can y'all hear me? All right, Dev, good looking. All right, so... There's this whole thing now that's come out where uh, Bimmy, where they saying that he told, they got the paperwork to prove it. Bimmy trying to defend his name. And it's not looking good. Right now, I know that whole snitching thing is a thing to try to discredit people because niggas try to do it with me, right? And every time it ain't a situation where a nigga was telling, it's just a time, it just be these motherfuckers that see you popular and then they come out, oh, this nigga telling he told on me to say, no just so they could get fame and clout. Because now we in the era where it's like 50 Cent How to Rob. You come out, you diss somebody, you get all the attention, and then if you're good enough and you're successful enough, that's attention to give you a career. Well, many people been trying that with a lot of people, and that formula doesn't work no more. You know what I'm saying? The whole snitching thing is a thing of the past. Nobody cares no more. You talking about a bunch of grown ass men that survived the streets and made it to the entertainment business and, uh, and uh, moved on with their lives, right? Then you got these dudes like Bimmy that got out of the streets a guy in the music industry that get on the internet and keep telling all these motherfucking street stories. All these war stories, all these drug stories, how much money they was getting, murders, all kind of stuff. Now, for me, I'm more of a street nigga than a lot of these niggas. probably Bimmy included, right? But never do I come up on here talking about my street stories or the stuff that my niggas did in the streets or we did in the streets. Who does that? Except for a nigga that ain't really did shit. Because if you really did shit, you're not talking about it. At least I'm not. I'm not going to get up on here and tell y'all about crimes and shit that I did, well, even if the statute of limitations is up. You know what I'm saying? Who brags about selling crack? Destroying your neighborhood. Who brags about killing people? Killing your own kind, because most of y'all don't kill black people. Outside of, you know, just killing another human. Y'all get up here and brag 
Vlad bring people on his 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 platform to brag about murders they did. And then got the nerd talking about he don't want to interview a fucking rapist. I'm not gonna interview no the booty bandit dude. I got morals. But you bring a black a bunch of black men on your platform to talk about how they killed other black men and how they sold drugs to their community. Now you got a moral compass when it comes to rape. Like murder isn't worse. So we got the glowing headphones. So this sky look like something in the Stephen King movie. It's dark as hell out here. I'm about to uh, go up in the light and talk to y'all. But, um, uh, Like, Vlad told my, oh, I ain't going to interview the booty bandit dude, you know, because he was raping men in jail. So, you ready, you interview niggas that killed niggas in jail? What are you talking about? You interviewed pedophiles. You interviewed murderers, drug dealers. And now you got a goddamn moral compass. You don't want to uh, rape the booty bandit dude. Man, Vlad, get out of here. You sound crazy as hell, nigga. And if you're all these murderers, fucking pedophiles and shit, you got pedophiles on your show, bro. You interview pedophiles. And then you talking about you, you don't want to interview a dude that was raping other dudes? Man, get out of here. Go ahead and interview him. Like you care. You don't even interview people that was convicted of rape, I believe. Wasn't Aaron Hall on Vlad? No disrespect to Aaron Hall. I ain't saying you did it. I'm just saying you was convicted of it. Y'all niggas, Mike Tyson, convicted of it. Was he on Vlad? I'm not sure. No, Vlad don't interview victims. He only interviewed the, the, the murderers. All, all that, he loved black people to talk about murder and drugs. And these fools keep going up in there telling on themselves. Same thing with uh, Bimmy. Bimmy go up there and tell all these stories about the Supreme team. Right? Now, he don't even told the story about the same thing that these people got these accusations about him uh, telling. He tells that story and he makes himself look even more guilty. Oh yeah, he had Mystical on his show too, right? Didn't Vlad have Mystical up there too? So nigga, you interview rapists. Allegedly. Or convicted rapists. How about I just say that? You you interview convicted rapists. So because it's a man, is it's different? Man, Vlad, you need to stop with the bullshit like you got a moral compass. You don't got a moral compass, Vlad. Stop it, bro. Stop it. You bring all these drug dealers up from the 80s. Them niggas ain't shit. Ain't there one of them niggas ain't shit. None of them drug dealers. I don't care what city, city they come from. Myself included. Selling drugs ain't make us cool, nigga. Or German. Or Russian. You ain't no nigga. You bring all these dudes that brought 
killed people from D.C. to New York to California. And now you, and you, you had convicted rapists on your show. Now you don't want the booty banded dude on your show. Man, get out of here. Just get out of here, Vlad. Stop with the bullshit, bro. Oh, I ain't going to bring him on here. You know, uh, that's where I stop. Oh, yeah, but you had mystical. And Sorry about that, y'all. They keep calling, man. got to know, man, if you call my phone and I don't answer, I'm live. Could they want the young black kids to try to imitate? Of course they do. Hell yeah, they do. Yeah, Preem don't don't rock with Bimmy because he he started rocking with 50. Yes, that is true. Oh yeah, let me get back to Bimmy now. Right? So to make a long story short, to me, the dude uh zip is he what you call it. His point is valid. His point is valid. Even though niggas are trying to act like the dude, uh, the dude Zip is tripping, he ain't tripping. He, he, he got a valid point. Because in a nutshell, you know, oh, I could walk around the track. It's still lit. Um, in a nutshell, this, this is how the story goes down, right? There were, it was a, 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 everybody was playing ball in the park. And I'm paraphrasing because I don't have the, uh, the paperwork in front of me, right? Uh, they all in the park playing balls. Let's just say 100 people in the park, right? Playing ball. A shooting happens, right? Somebody get murdered. Uh, I think like two people got shot. Somebody just somebody dies, right? Now somebody dies, and they got a witness that says who who done it. Now at the time, Bimmy got one foot in the in the streets and one foot in the music business, allegedly, right? So the, 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 the police know Bimmy as music, allegedly, because they uh, he was working with Run DMC and them, and he was working in the music industry, you know, at simultaneously while the whole Supreme Team thing was going on, all right? Now, Trying to remember. Somehow or another, there's a witness to the shooting that tells on the dude named Troy and, and another dude, right? So the witness in the paperwork is a confidential uh, uh, informant. So they don't they don't have Bimmy's name in it. It's, it, they, his, uh, his confidential informant name is Music, right? Now, I've heard Bimmy say himself that the police referred to him as Music. He said this himself. They called him Music because he was in the music industry and stuff, so they refer, call him Music. Now, he gave himself that name and then the confidential uh, informant name was music, right? 
So this is where I feel Zip has a, a, a valid point and niggas is trying to curve his shit, right? This is where I feel they trying to curve him. What you call it? Uh, Bimmy says that he signed the affidavit. And the affidavit that he signed stated that he went back and signed the affidavit saying that he didn't see anything. Right? Now, this, this is where everybody's trying to uh, mind trick Zip. They trying to mind trick Zip because he's saying that, oh, he went to sign an uh, affidavit, but it was for the defense. So if he was signing an affidavit for the prosecution, it would have make him a snitch. But it being that he signed an affidavit for the defense, he's not being a snitch. He's just telling. No. Y'all got that wrong. Y'all got that all wrong. Y'all got that all wrong. Let me sit down right here and, and run this down real quick. <sighs> All right, so so where they where they got the affidavit thing? wrong at in my opinion is that like Bimmy is saying that he signed the affidavit to say that he didn't see nothing right well clearly at some point or another Bimmy told the police allegedly he must have told the police what he saw being that he made a statement saying what he saw he had to go and retract what he saw by writing the affidavit saying that he didn't see anything. So the only reason that Troy and them probably can't double back to, to Bimmy the reason Troy and them niggas double back to Bimmy is because Allegedly, his statement implicated Troy and whoever in the crime. So, um, so being that um, he went and and because think about it, why would you have to write an affidavit to say that you you didn't see nothing? If you're in the streets, you or you've been in the streets, you know that don't make no goddamn sense. Right? That don't make no sense. If you didn't see nothing when they first when they questioned you, if you said I ain't seen nothing, you didn't see nothing, there's nothing, there's no statement, there's no nothing for you to say that you didn't see nothing. But for you to create an affidavit saying that you didn't see nothing, that's because you gave a statement allegedly saying that you saw something and you implicated somebody that's why these niggas double back down on bimmy and made him write a, a statement to counter what was in the original statement they wouldn't have never came they wouldn't have never needed a, a, a affidavit from from bimmy saying that he never seen nothing if he didn't make a statement saying that he saw something so that's where everybody's trying to flip the dude zip as if where he's saying this cat. But if, if Bimmy telling y'all himself, yo, I signed the affidavit, you know, to say I ain't seen nothing. And then uh, the other thing that he's doing to flip it is like that he's saying that what precinct was that? What precinct was that? And Zip is giving him the precinct, but that precinct may be the precinct that arrested the dudes that, that got the case. 
Maybe they didn't get arrested in, in Baisley Park a, a police area. Maybe they got arrested in Brooklyn. And being that, that they got arrested in Brooklyn, that's where they probably did the, all the, the questioning and this, that, and the other and took the arrest. It don't necessarily mean that the dude got arrested in Queens in that precinct area for them to have the case. He could have got arrested in Brooklyn. Like, they trying to flip the dude's zip, you know, by using the precincts to throw him off. Like, yo, those are two different cases. Not necessarily. I'm not saying they not. But not they not necessarily has to be two different cases. Do you understand that? That dude could have got arrested in Brooklyn. And his case could have started from Brooklyn. It didn't have to happen in, in that precinct. How many people we know that uh caught crimes and got arrested states away? Went on, you know, was on the run and they got caught states away. They the precinct that they took the crime in may not have the, the police report. So that's that's nonsense. You know what I'm saying? And I, I believe that being that so many people got respect for Bimmy or had respect for him, that they don't want to believe that it could be true. And I'm not saying that it is or isn't. I'm just saying if you just go in off the facts, and you going off with what, what, what they they reading, you know what I'm saying? And then you do you going to the dude that's who who case it is that's locked up. Like why would why would he just make he's just making up all that just to get out? That's not gonna get him out. If that was the case, why he didn't do that five years ago, ten years ago, twenty years ago? Now, don't get me wrong. There's niggas out here that lie and say people told on them. You know what I'm saying? And for me, even if Bimmy did tell on them, right? Technically, that don't make him a snitch. Why? Because he wasn't acting in concert with Troy and them. He didn't roll up with Troy and them niggas and shoot up the park and they, and then somebody died and then he told on, on Troy and them to save himself. No, it, it was probably more that the police went and grabbed Bimmy because they knew they knew him for being out there in the streets and they probably took his ass to the precinct and put, put his ass under pressure. They probably called him dirty with some shit and made him tell. You know what I'm saying? So technically, if he was, if he told, he might have been, uh, well, I don't know, because they call him a confident, confidential informant. So he could have been telling on a, a lot of shit outside of that. But I'm saying, he didn't roll up there with Troy and them and, did, and do that and then told to get himself free. That will be snitching, right? Snitching is acting in concert with some people, and all, and you get caught, and your co-defendants don't get caught, or the people you plan to do this crime with, and you tell on them like, "Hey, y'all, I got caught. Come out, we all caught." That's snitching. Technically, what Bimmy did wasn't snitching. Bimmy was the old lady in the window that saw something and, and, and told. But he's not going to get a pass for that because people are going to say, nigga, you wasn't a civilian. You was in the streets, Bimmy. You knew better. You knew to keep your mouth cut closed. You posed him down with the Supreme team. This, that, and the third. But as you can see, Supreme, I mean, Bimmy ain't got no moral compass when it come with the streets. Because when I was around Bimmy, when we was producing um, Knockout, all that nigga talked about was goddamn Supreme. This nigga talked about Supreme like that nigga was the Elijah Muhammad. Like that nigga, I was like, damn, this nigga on Supreme dick. You know what I'm saying? Like, 
This nigga, he used to talk about Supreme in every other conversation. You know, uh, you know, our OG Supreme, he told us, that nigga, he, he would talk, he would sound like, um, he would sound like Malcolm, not Malcolm X. He would sound like Elijah Muhammad talking about, um, I got to get my walk on again. I, I hate uh, stopping. Right? Google what if you think I'm lying. Hold on. NYC confidential informant salary is. Yeah, they I seen somebody posting that. Niggas getting a lot of money in New York. Niggas making a hundred bands a year in New York being down with the police. But um, damn, I lost my train of thought. Uh, so with uh, with Bimmy, um, hold on, let me get where where, where what I was saying. Damn. Oh, all right, thanks. Yeah. Um. So Bimmy, when I was around him, he used to talk about Supreme. Like he was Elijah Muhammad and shit, and and and, and Bimmy was Farrakhan. You know, our OG Supreme, he taught us woo 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 woo. Yo, our OG Supreme, he taught us woo 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 woo. That's all, B all Bimmy used to say. And anybody that's around Bimmy, that that know him, y'all know I'm telling the truth. Cause he, he can't, he could not go a conversation without bringing Supreme name up and where Supreme taught him and all that stuff. Right? So I'm saying not to say, Bimmy ain't got no moral compass. Cause the way he used to talk about Supreme to me, like he was Elijah Muhammad to Farrakhan. And I can never see Farrakhan, uh, turning on Elijah Muhammad. And I seen Bimmy turn on Supreme and go start rocking with 50. Now I know Bimmy know 50 just like he know Supreme and they all from Queens, this, that, and the other. But you know damn well, Bimmy, you do not supposed to be rocking with 50. And you know damn well if Supreme wasn't in jail, you would not be rocking with 50. You'll be all up under Supreme ass if, if that nigga was home. If that nigga get out tomorrow, you'll be trying to make it right with him. This is why many of y'all be said, yo, how, how Bimmy wasn't in that Supreme team joint that Nas did. Uh, cause Supreme told Nas, nigga, you better not put that nigga in there. That nigga over there fucking with the ops. So if you somebody like Supreme, you're going to die with a moral compass because that's just who he is. That's just what he stands on, right? So when you see Bimmy rocking with 50 and then these allegations come out, is it hard for you to believe it? I'm not saying it's true. But if that nigga could turn on Supreme for 50, imagine Farrakhan telling y'all F for Elijah Muhammad. Or he ain't rocking with Elijah Muhammad no more. Or he, he rocking with Elijah Muhammad enemy. Imagine that. Imagine Farrakhan just start going against everything he said and now he... He's just a, he loved the Jews and everything else, and he's running with them, and he's going to to bar mitzvahs, and 
he go and, and, and marry and have babies by a Jewish girl. That's the equivalent of Bim, Bimmy messing with 50. And like I said, I know they know each other. But when Supreme was home, Bimmy wasn't messing with no 50 Cent. And 50 Cent is smart enough to mess with Bimmy. Because 50, that nigga done wrote the 50 Laws of Power. So he, he knows how to play the game. He knows the 48 Laws of Power. So he used Bimmy. To get at to get at Supreme, to, to get under Supreme emotions. I tell you one thing, you would never see goddamn Tony Yeo over there messing with Supreme. I guarantee you that. I want to put my life on it, but I wouldn't. I have to see, because I would have put my life that Bimmy when it never rocked with 50. So I ain't gonna do that. I ain't going to do that at all. But if I was Bimmy, I wouldn't even care. Why? Look how everybody still embrace 6 ix 9 Bimmy ain't in the streets no more. Bimmy in the music business. Right? Y'all can still rock with 6 9 Whack. Whack is a stone cold gangbanger. Right? Kodak Black was looked at as a stone cold street nigga. Right? Nobody care about that. Nobody care about that. Vlad has Sammy Gravano on his show. Nobody said nothing about that. Like, y'all niggas with this, 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 uh, this Helen shit. Nobody cares about that no more. If it, clearly, only the niggas on YouTube that are uh, career criminals or institutionalized that sit up there and talk about jail stories all day or keep talking about crimes back in the days. Only the, that that's that's that audience. They care about that. The average person don't care about that shit. I guarantee you niggas going, even if they come to find out everything is true in that Bimmy shit. You think these fake ass industry niggas ain't gonna stop fucking with Bimmy? No. They still gonna be rocking out with him. They still gonna be putting him on shows. They still gonna be interviewing him. They don't care. Bimmy can sit out here and argue the fact, yo, it ain't true. I only signed the affidavit because of boo -boo 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 -boo. it don't even matter, brother. You're going to have people that still going to rock out with you. And you're going to still have people that don't, they ain't never even been in the streets. That don't even know what an affidavit is. That don't even understand what the street code is. They're going to get on there and they're going to get in the comments and they're going to call you rat, 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 that. These niggas is imitators. Duplicators and nut eaters. That's why my name is my name. My name is Choke. My name ain't Scarface. I'm not trying to be nobody else. I see niggas steal my name. They niggas want to be me in the comments. Dick eaters. Just keep eating dick. Like, it, it, just know that. These niggas like to eat dick and imitate and follow and not be original. N niggas don't want to be themselves. Now everybody is YSL or YME or some kind of letters before they name. And they write, every, all these dudes is copycats. 
Nobody's proud to be they self. Nobody want to be they self. Everybody want to be somebody else. Everybody want to get attention for trying to be somebody else. You see, when you see names like John Paul and David, David Brow Burner, real people want to be they selves. People that just want to be them, just be recognized to be them. That's why my channel name is Arthur D. Austin. I just see a nigga make a page with my name. Dick eating, dick eating. Embarrassing. It's just embarrassing, bro. That niggas cannot be themselves. Niggas just want attention. So they get up on this internet and they niggas talk about all this drug street shit that they did. Like that shit was cool. Like you really built up the neighborhood talking to Supreme Team trash. Well, all the niggas that died. This whole case is about innocent people playing basketball that died. This whole case is about people outside having a good time playing basketball and some niggas come and shoot up the park and people die. And niggas is saying to about, oh, you told, you told, oh, well, you don't think about the family? Who family, the people that died? Nobody's, let, let's just say, let's say Bimmy, let's say Bimmy told, right? Let's just say Bimmy told. So y'all telling me, Bimmy is a, a, a fucking rat, a fucking sucker, a fucking snitch, because he told on some niggas that came and sprayed up a park full of people. You see, you see how, how, how backwards our people are, our coach are? He should be a hero. He should be, he should be giving props if he told. Them niggas deserve to go to jail if they did that. I like our culture is so fucking backwards. It's so backwards. So some innocent people get killed in the baseball and on the basketball court, right? Bimmy tells allegedly who did it. He didn't run up, he didn't come up. With the uh with these dudes. And then these dudes is what from Brooklyn? They not even from his neighborhood. And they come and kill somebody in his neighborhood. And as a figurehead of his neighborhood, he tells the police who did it. And y'all niggas is clowning him for fucking getting justice for the family. Now, right now, you got niggas sitting here, oh, choke talking like a snitch. You got ignorant niggas right now thinking that right now. Choke talking like a snitch. A snitch is a person that works in concert with somebody knowingly going to do a crime with them. Knowingly going to do a crime with them and then lies, I mean, and then tells on the person to save themselves because they don't want to deal with the repercussions of the consequences that they all went to do. Bimmy then roll up on the park with these niggas. These niggas came up to a park where people are playing basketball, not selling drugs, playing basketball, community activity, with kids and everything outside. And y'all niggas is mad at this nigga because he fucking told who killed the people. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> Black people, we are fucking backwards, bro.
joke. I'm from Queens and I don't look up to none of them clowns and they neighborhood close to mine. Happy I grew up and moved down to the South. I feel you. Yeah, so you got a whole bunch of people on YouTube right now and they destroying Bimmy because he allegedly told on some dudes that came up in his neighborhood and killed some people in the park. And he supposed to be the head nigga in the, the neighborhood that everybody supposed to know, whatever. Now these dudes get locked up for their crime, this, that, and over. And they probably threatened Bimmy ass to he better retract his statement or they was gonna plug him. And that's why he probably went and signed an affidavit saying that he didn't see nothing. But y'all y'all going to destroy him <laughs> for tell <laughs> Y'all gonna destroy him. Cause some niggas came and killed somebody in his neighborhood. And technically, if he did it, he did the right thing, right? Well, I guess he didn't cause he was a street nigga. But was he a street nigga or was he in the music? Which one was it? But you see how our culture is? Y'all praise the murderers and the drug dealers, the niggas that destroyed our neighborhood. This is why none of them niggas is on my channel. I don't do all that uh, bringing niggas on my channel to brag about how much coke they sold, how many keys they had, how many, nigga, fuck y'all niggas. You don't get no props for just de destroying neighborhoods. You don't get no props for killing niggas. You don't get no props from me for that. The rest of these motherfucking idiots that ain't been in the street like me, they'll glorify y'all niggas with that dumb ass shit. Y'all niggas ain't nobody. That niggas sold drugs. What y'all doing? How much? Y how many millions y'all got now? All y'all niggas out there talking, all that, y'all was moving all them bricks in there. How many bricks you got now? How many bricks in the building you own now? Oh, you don't own a building. Oh, but you own the block. Fuck out of here. The video of Ali is on my page already. Niggas be on YouTube all day, Instagram all day. Yeah, I had this block sewn up. I had this city sewn up. You yeah, had shit sewn up. What the hell you went to jail for if you had it sewn up? Our culture is backwards, y'all. Y'all sitting here destroying the dude who told on some people that came in his park and murdered some people. <laughs> and, and he's the bad guy. <laughs> hey, yo. Hey, yo. Black people. Some of us are the stupidest fucking people on the planet. Y'all say, hey, listen to this music, my coochie pink, my asshole brown, and all y'all grown ass women popping in and like y'all just, just destroying our culture. Y'all destroying us as a race, as a people. The women out here acting as ratchet as a motherfucker. Like they ain't got no disrespect on social media and they panties and bra every time they get all bathing suit just for attention. And niggas is out here destroying a nigga 
because he told about a dude that he wasn't in, down with, he wasn't in, acting in concert with, came in his park, shot it up, killed some people, and niggas is destroying him for that shit. How do y'all think the parents of uh, 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 the people that got killed feel? What if that was your mother that got shot in the park? Or your little innocent sister? Would you be calling Bimmy a snitch? If, if you wanted to find out who, who shot your little, if your sister got hit by a stray bullet in the park, just sitting there watching kids playing basketball, she over there doing double dutch or, or hopscotch, and she get hit because some niggas come up there because they got some beef with some niggas and want to shoot up the whole fucking park. Now your baby dead in the hospital, in the morgue, in the coffin, and you want to know who did it. And Bimmy knows. Right? Bimmy know. Are you going to be mad at him if he don't tell you who, who killed your baby? If Bimmy knew who came and shot up the park, and it was your kid that got hit, and he ain't got nothing to do with these niggas. And he tell you, yo, that was Troy and them, you know, niggas from Queen, uh, Brooklyn, Greensville. I'm just making up shit. You know what I'm saying? Are you going to be mad at him and be like, yo, nigga, you a snitch. Why you tell me who shot my little sister? Oh, you tell it? You tell it who... You t like, what sense do that make, bro? What sense do that make? Little cutie Asian chick. So, on one half, on the, I, I get why niggas is going at Bimmy because he always talking this super gangster tough shit. You know what I'm saying? So, from that aspect of it, I, I understand why they doing what they doing. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, he, he done told all these stories and basically told on himself. You know what I'm saying? But... To make a long story short, man. That whole snitching era and paperwork era and all that shit. After 6 9 after, I ain't gonna even name a bunch of other niggas because then y'all gonna start jumping on them. There's a lot of motherfuckers out here that get arrested and ain't doing no goddamn biz. And y'all know these niggas done told. There's a lot of niggas that court cases they ain't never go back to court. Y'all know these niggas is working. And y'all don't get on them because y'all want to do songs with them and y'all want to hang with them. This, that, and the third. But all of everybody that's, that's saying that, that the dude Zip is reaching, he not reaching. Y'all just trying to cover Bimmy ass. And it is what it is. It is what it is. But like I said, th this is the era where none of that shit don't matter no more. It truly don't. God damn, so dark I, I can't even see my car. But uh, y'all gotta grow up, grow up and glow up, grow up and glow up.
<laughs> Look, I ain't going to touch on everybody's cases. I see you, though. And you know exactly what I'm talking about. About to go make me a turkey burger and some sweet potato fries. And then I'm coming back on live to finish up for Tory Case tomorrow. Somebody said they moved the date. I got to double check that. I don't know for sure if they moved the date. But I'm going to finish up what I was doing last night, recapping the case. So can somebody tell me what time it is? Because I can't see my clock on Eastern Standard Time. What I saw there, like 7.30, 8.30. It's almost 9 o'clock, right? So I'll come back on it. 9.14, good looking, y'all. 10 o'clock, y'all, I'll be back live. 10 o'clock with all the evidence in the Megan case. Sean, the, the Sean uh, Kelly statement. All the evidence, every piece of evidence and stuff. So shout out to my man Alex over at Street TV. But I'll be back at uh, 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock, I will be live, all right? One love. Yes, tonight, 10 o'clock tonight. 45 minutes. Peace.